Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over question 3 from the Compound Data 2 workshop. Um, so in this question here, we are looking at the difference between a shallow copy and a deep copy of an array. Um, so if that's still something that you're not quite sure on, um, definitely have a look over the notes on reference semantics and uh, there are some videos here uh, that you can watch there as well. So for this question, we're just going to go line by line um, and have a look at what our code will look like uh, using memory diagrams. Um, and then when we get to a print line statement, we can work out what, for example, source zero is at this point in time. So if we're going line by line, um, first we have an integer array called source. Uh, so we're declaring, creating and assigning. So in memory, It's going to look something like this. We've got the values 10, 70, 20, and 90. So source is a reference to an integer array, and it's referencing uh, a place of memory that has an array of these four values. So that's our first line. And then our second line says integer array destination is equal to source. So that means that we have a reference called destination which refers to an integer array, that's somewhere in memory, um, and destination is equal to source. Um, and source, which is up here, source um, contains a reference to a place in memory that has this array. So when I'm saying destination is equal to source, I'm saying that destination is equal to this same reference in memory um, where this array is stored. So this is creating a shallow copy. We're not creating a new place in memory. We don't have that keyword new, um, which says I want a new place in memory. Um, this is a shallow copy and it's referring to the same place. Um, so when I get here and I say destination index zero is equal to 40, um, well, if I have a look at destination and I have a look at where it's pointing, index zero is over here. So it's this value here that's being updated. Okay, so that's being updated there. And when I print the value of source zero, well, source zero is pointing to that same place in memory, that same array at index zero. Um, so when we run this code, what's printed is the number 40. So this question is just getting you used to the idea of the difference between shallow copy and deep copy. And this is an example of a, uh, a shallow copy. Um, so our next line says we have another integer array called yet another. Um, so that's another reference to an integer array. So I'll create that reference down the bottom here. And that is referring to an array that has these three values, 80, 60, 50. Eighty, sixty, fifty. So that's a re reference to another place in memory. And now I have destination is equal to yet another. So destination is equal to um, yet another, which is a reference to a place in memory. So that breaks the reference between um, destination and the array it was previously referencing. It doesn't reference that anymore. It is now equal to whatever yet another is referencing. Um, which is this array here. So now when I say destination one is equal to 100, destination, which is this reference here, is now referring to this array at index one. So it's this value here that's being updated to 100. Um, and now when we print source one, well source one is up here and the item at index one is 70. So what I'll be printing is 70. I won't be printing a hundred because destination no longer refers to the same place in memory as source. Um, so that's what you should get there. The first one for source zero is 40 um, and the source one is 70. So this is a good example of a shallow copy. 
Uh, and question 3.2 is an example of a deep copy. So in question 3.2, we've got an integer array A, which has the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I've got a reference called A, which is, exists in its own place in memory, and it, score, it stores the memory address for this array here. which has these values. Uh, our second line says integer array B is a new integer array with five spaces in memory. So I've got my reference B and it's referring to an array that has five spaces in memory. So I can create that and I'll just have them like this for now. And then I have this loop that we've talked about before, this loop that we know will go through every item in an array, uh, where i is representing the index of each item in an array. So for each item, we're saying bi is equal to a, a dot length minus one minus i. So let's write that out for the first view so we can get an idea of what's happening. And then when we recognize the pattern, uh, we can just skip ahead and fill in the rest of our values because this doesn't seem like a regular deep copy where we're just copying um, the exact values across from A to B. Uh, so if we have a look at when I is equal to zero, we've got B zero is equal to A, A dot length, minus one, minus I, which is zero, Great, so B0, which is this here, is equal to A, A dot length, minus one, minus zero. So let's fill in these values. We've got A, A dot length we know is five because there are five items inside A, or five spaces in memory we said. So um, we can replace that with five, minus one, minus zero. So we've got five minus zero minus, sorry, five minus one minus zero, which is four. So in the end, we've got B zero is equal to A four. So B zero is equal to A at index four, which is the value five. So I can fill that in there. Great. Um, so if we move to our next index, which is one. So we've got B1 is equal to A dot length minus one minus one. We said A dot length was five, so it's A five minus one minus one. So five minus one minus one uh, is three. So we've got B1 is equal to the value inside A3, which is this one here. So it's value is four. And we'll just do one more here just um, so we can make sure that we've got the correct pattern. So our next index is index two. So A or B two is equal to A at A dot length minus one minus two. So it's A five minus one minus two. Um, and that will give us two. So we've got B two is equal to A2, so that's three. So we can start to see the pattern now. Um, as our I value, our index increases, uh, the place or the value inside A that we're referencing um, is starting at the last index and moving backwards. So we're getting the reverse. So once this is completed, we'll have something like this. So B is a copy of A but A reversed. Um, so a bit different to your regular deep copy um, of an array. It's not an exact copy, uh, but it's just an adjusted copy. And that's a little look into the difference between doing a shallow copy and a deep copy with compound data.